Many viewers will notice that I've got the burner in the boat. I haven't made a video of it yet because I'm still experimenting with um, flue length and uh, flues as well. So at the moment I've got a bit of a crude setup, but it's um, I think it's actually the right height because it doesn't interfere with people walking around. So I think I'm going to go for that height. I'm using my Samsung S3, which is years old, been in the builders three times and literally is on its last legs. Anyway, we're at Roxham now. Last night I had the burner on and um, it was well over 35 degrees in the cabin, which is gorgeous. But it burnt out in the night time and when I woke up this morning it was freezing. We're now about to make a trip to Coltershaw. This boat here, which my brother is on, we're just doing the leaks on it because uh, where the winches are on the top, uh, we've had some water coming through and it's wrecked the, the ply, so we got it all out and we're going to fix the leaks and then we're going to have to chop up some more ply. But this is a routine thing with boats. The only water that comes in, really, is through all the shit you've got on top deck, but um, it's part and parcel of the job, I suppose. The only thing wrong with this place is that people come and feed the birds next to your boat and the birds tend to shit all over your boat, which can be a bit annoying to be fair. In fact, yesterday I left a cup out on the deck and a bird actually managed to bullseye that cup, which is a bit weird when you think about it. Right, before we start up and head off, uh, I'd just like to say we did find a laundrette here and a shower, so it's quite a convenient place to stop. Right, you're ready to go now, Ross? So where we go. Another thing about having the flu that height, I can stand here and not get choked out by the smoke. I believe the safety uh, requirements are that it's uh, 60 centimeters above the deck. And I think 60 would be too low, so I might be going for this height. Uh, it's certainly going to change the cowl, I think we need to put a different cowl on. But apart from that, it's all coming together very nicely indeed. I've got a Borg Warner gearbox on this uh, boat, it's got a BMC 1500. I noticed when the engine's cold that uh, when you put it into first especially, it tends to make a bit of a clanking noise, yet when it warms up it's, it's fine. You've really got to give it a little bit more revs than normal when it's cold, so I think I'm going to have to check out the fluid on that because um, I'm pretty sure it should be making that noise. Oh, he's not watching his fishing line. Jesus, that's right by my boat. Fucking assholes. During the summer, I think I must have taken four, three or four fishing lines. On one occasion, the bloke had three fishing rods on his boat and went back inside and left the three lines across the, the waterways. I mean, it's just remarkable. Um, I, I, you find people sitting on boats fishing and they've got their back to the water so they don't know if anybody's coming or not. And uh, you know, you really don't want this stuff wrapped around your propeller. I saw rods being snatched from the hedges and hire boats taking them up the river. It doesn't say I had three or four myself. And uh, it's not the boater's fault, you know, the fishermen put their lines out in some cases and disappear. Go inside the boat or they're not paying attention and you end up taking their lines and um, every time it happens they seem to sort of blame you and you think well at the end of the day you're coming down the river in a boat the diesel engine thumping away it's their responsibility to watch out for you because you can't watch out for fishing lines in fact it's physically impossible actually while I'm on the subject of fishermen and uh, I apologize if I sound like I'm having a bit of a whinge but um, uh, I know I'm quite notorious for disliking the treatment the hire boat companies bestow upon people, but I find sometimes you come into a mooring, particularly in the winter, uh, namely Beckles, Loddon, and even Stalham Stays, and the fishermen are obliged to move. In fact, on the BA sign, it actually says something to the effect of uh, anglers must give way to boats wishing to moor. Yet when you come into a public mooring, or a BA mooring during the winter and there's half a dozen fishermen there they don't want to move and they don't understand that you've got to tie your boat up and for some reason they refuse to move and you know it's it's 
black and white, it couldn't be more plain and clear and evident. It's, you come in with a boat, if there's someone fishing there, they've got to get out of the way. It doesn't matter whether it's a parish mooring, it doesn't matter if it's a BA mooring, it doesn't even matter if it's private land. The fact of the matter is, this is the broads and the fishermen must give way for the boats wishing to moor. And I can tell you now that 99.9% .9 of the time, they just don't want to know. Okay, that's the winch over. Back to boating. Actually, that's not so much of a winch. It's actually factual. Um, kind of like relaying it as, as I've discovered it myself, really. It's, um, it's not telling tales. It's not gossip. It's factual. You come into moor and they just don't want to move. Right, as I say, we're coming up to Coltishall. It's a very nice, peaceful little run, this. I've heard people complaining that in the summertime it's very heavily reeded up and um, their propellers get fouled and what have you but so I've never actually come up here in the summer but uh, it's certainly okay in the winter but it's one of those routes which you really 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 want to go slow it's it's just peaceful it's got a very remote feeling about it as well I'm doing a thousand revs at the moment and a thousand revs is pretty much about as slow as I can go what that makes out as uh, probably about three or four miles an hour I think maybe near a four it's hard to say but um, it's actually a little bit hilly around here it's the first time really you start to see hills you don't see hills anywhere else apart from coming into Norwich it's all flat so you have got a bit of cover here Well, it looks like there's been a lot of uh, woodwork down here, tree felling, coppicing, whatever you want to call it. Um, it certainly sort of thickens up with the old trees. They certainly like the uh, riverbank, that's for sure. You get a lot more of this up in the North Broads. When you get on the South Broads, it's really quite the opposite. You don't get the trees so much. It's just the reeds and uh, the fields. So going down in the winter time with the howling wind, it can be pretty nasty. I just noticed, right by the bank there, it's only about a foot deep. I bet that catches a few people out in the summertime. It's not cold when you're in the sun, but the moment you go into the shade, it's really, really cold and damp. But this is what I love about the winter, these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blue skies. That house up there reminds me of um, Guernsey, the Channel Islands, which is my boyhood home. I know it's um, covered in pebbles, but from a distance it looks like granite. You see a lot of granite houses over there because it's all quarried locally. Right, well this is a lovely little place here. Beautiful. Yeah, that's a garden and a half. I wouldn't fancy mowing that. Well, it has to be said, there's no shortage of moorings down here. A lot of them are um, staith moorings too. I mean, there you go, right by a church as well. Can't think of anywhere else on the broads you can do that. Looks like we've got some old school boatyards coming up here now. It's hard to believe all this waterway actually exists all the way past Roxham. I know the end of the navigation is further up, but I've never actually explored that point, so we're going to have to have a little look up there and see what the see what the story is. There you go, another mooring. I think that's the one, two, three, four. That's four, maybe five that we've passed since we left Roxham. Well, there's some autumn colours for you. Well, wow, that's really quite striking. I don't quite know why that's gone like that. I thought they were evergreens. Looks like an evergreen, but obviously it isn't. Very strange. Wicked colours though. Bloody hell. Well, as you can see, it's a very beautiful location. And you get to appreciate it all because, as you can now see, we're going very, very slowly indeed.
Yeah, we're certainly not far away from the river actually freezing up. I've seen a couple of dikes on the side and uh, they're frozen pretty solid. In fact, you can see here where the sun hasn't quite reached yet. It's all getting a bit frosty. Um, especially out of this part because it's so much more fresh water, you're going to get uh, the water freezing up here quite easily. It doesn't take much at all. Looks like we're getting into a bit more of a residential area now. It's a nice place to keep your boat, I think. It's certainly out of the way, that's for sure. Very nice. Side on moorings as well. I always prefer that. And electric. Very good indeed, I find out what this place is cool. You can see the smoke coming from the chimney there with the autumn shades and the trees behind. It's quite a idyllic setting actually. Looking at some of these boats, I actually do wonder how the hell they get under the bridge. I know the roofs slide back, but even I mean that bit there, that's oh that's gotta be about seven feet. Probably have to pick their moments to go through Rotten Bridge or whatever. Well. I'd say that's a Dutch style house. It looks like those uh, Stellenbosch type buildings you get in South Africa. Yeah, it's definitely Dutch. Well, it looks like you've got to have a few bucks to live around here. Oh, look at that. Very nice. Well, that's the way to do it. Nice big house. Your own private mooring. Fantastic. And here is our destination for today. We are coming up to Coltershaw. And um, there's a couple of pubs there, which is fine by me. Nothing like a nice pint after a good hour long cruise down the river. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, serenity and the beautiful surroundings. some lovely houses up here. Very nice indeed. Right, that looks like Coltshall me to me. Coltshall Common, I believe. And I can't see my brother, so... Oh, there he goes. He's coming in now. Within convenient walking distance of the pub. I like his way of thinking. Blimey, there's a big one up there. The size of that bugger. Jesus. Okay. You know, the funny thing is, you look at the size of this mooring, right? And there's only one electric point, and it's right at the end. So they can put a couple more in along the way. Blimey, looks like the geese are the dominant species around here. Said you wouldn't go hungry. Sorry, vegetarians, but there are a lot of birds here. Not that I eat them, of course. Idly diddly, that's a good boat. Oh goody, there's a pub. Right, let's blow up and go and have a pint. I think that's all for now, folks. Cheerio. Right, well, we spent the night in Coltishall last night. It turned out to be the coldest night of 2016 so far. When I came back to the boat here, the boat was completely and utterly covered in ice and uh, I'd been out supporting the local economy. Anyway, to cut a long story short, got into the boat, it was sub-zero, got the burner going, and within half an hour it was in the mid-twenties, so drop down pull, that works a treat. And obviously during the night it burnt out, and uh, when I woke up this morning it was sub-zero again. So it's all rather cold at the moment. You can still see all the ice on the on the grass, but it's a clear blue sky and during the day it's going to be lovely. So what we're going to do is going to head back to Roxham now and uh, take on some supplies and then we'll slowly make our way back to the morning.